I'm Jian Feng Chen from Shanghai Institute of Biochemistry and Cell Biology. Uh, as introduced by, uh, by Nathan, um, my lab mainly works on a family of cell hidden molecules named the integrin. So today I will go into talk something about some of our recent uh, findings uh, about the regulation of immune cell trafficking by adhesion signaling. Have some the laser pointer. Okay. So uh, as you may know, the uh, lymphocyte homing is very critical for the uh, immune homeostasis. And so during the uh, lymphocyte homing uh, process, uh, the lymphocytes will start to tether, tether on the blood vessel wall. Then they start to roll. And when they receive some activation signal like chemokines, the chemokine will induce the activation of the integrins on the surface of the leukocytes. Then the leukocytes uh, and lymphocyte will stop rolling and uh, form a firmer rest on the blood vessel wall. And then the, the cell will change their shape from the round to the flat shape. Then they migrate and transmigrate across the blood vessel into the, either the lymph node or the tissue or size of inflammation. So the first step for, for the tethering and rolling, uh, these steps are mainly mediated by uh, some uh, heme molecules named selectins. So uh, the selectins include the L-selectin, which is expressed on the surface of the lymphocytes, or E-selectin e, e and P-selectin, which are expressed on the surface of the endocytin cells. Um, in addition to selecting some integrin like the alpha-4 integrin, alpha-4b7 and alpha-4b1, and they also can mediate the rolling of the lymphocyte, but the rolling speed is a little bit slower than the selecting mediated cell rolling. And the, the, when the chemokine binds to the chemokine receptor on the surface of the lymphocyte, it will activate some intracellular signaling. This signaling can further induce the activation of the integrins on the surface of the, the lymphocyte. Uh, this integrin, activated integrin, can bind to their ligands on the blood vessel and in high affinity and in, uh, lead to the arrest of the lymphocyte on the blood vessel wall, then the integrin also can trigger the activation of the intracellular signaling in the lymphocyte, uh, promote the cell migration and transmigration. So in my lab, we try to understand how the integrins regulate these steps. Uh, Integrin a uh, family of type 1 transmembrane protein. They are alpha beta hydrodimer. Uh, so, in addition to mediate cell cell, cell extracellular matrix and cell pathogen interactions, so this uh, uh, basic function of the cell, cell hidden molecule, the ligand binding actually can induce the uh, signal transduction. Uh, intracellular signal transduction, it will activate multiple different uh, intracellular pathways and participate in many uh, cellular functions like cell survival, control of transcription, cell proliferation, and uh, cell mortality we are interested in and uh, the cytoskeletal organization. Uh, in vertebrate, uh, there are 24 different integrins. Uh, based on the, the ligands, uh, this integrin binds, the, the integrin family can be divided into the RGD binding integrins, the collagen binding integrins, lamin binding integrins, and some integrins are specifically expressed on the leukocyte surface. We call it leukocyte integrins. That's uh, MALA are interested in. Uh, so this table uh, simply summarized two major types of leukocyte integrin. They are big two integrins, 
there's a four type of these two integrates and alpha four integrates. So on the cell surface, if the cells did not receive any uh, stimuli, most of the integrate exist in this kind of low finity closed conformation. When the cells are exposed to some uh, stimuli, this, this can be uh, many factors from the uh, cell microenvironment, uh, such as uh, uh, different metal ions, calcium, magnesium, reducing uh, uh, for, uh, some reducing uh, uh, some reducing agents like the DTP or uh, uh, something like that, uh, and some uh, and also the mechanical force like uh, uh, shear flow. And uh, another uh, 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 stimuli like chemokines, when they bind to the chemokine receptor on the surface of the, the cells, it can activate the intracellular signaling. Uh, some regulator pro regulatory protein like tailin and kinlin, uh, this protein can bind to the short tail uh, inter beta subunit and induce the uh, global conformation or uh, change of integrating and it will change from this low finity closed conformation to the high finity open conformation. Then the integrin can bind to their fit their ligands in high affinity. We call it inside out signaling. So that means the, the signal from inside and going out and induce the conformational change of the actual cellular domains of integrin. And the integrin get uh, bind, uh, the ligand binding can further induce the conformational change of integrins, and also it can trigger the clustering of integrin on the plasma membrane. Uh, it will induce the uh, activation of downstream signal like the phosphation back and LK, and then it regulates the cell spreading, migration, cell survival, and so on. Uh, Two important questions in local site homing is uh, homing efficiency and tissue specificity. Today, I will talk about how fever regulates the homing efficiency of lymphocytes and the maintenance of tissue specificity by different chemokines. So fever is a very conserved response to infection and injury, I guess, um, everyone uh, should have this uh, uh, experience. Uh, so uh, even for cold blood animal like a lizard, uh, when the lizard gets infected by bacteria, uh, this animal will uh, take some bus to increase their body temperature. It is reported the increase of the body temperature is very critical for uh, the, the lizard to clear the bacterial infection. Uh, in 2010, there's a paper showing uh, in a mice with high temperature, body temperature, the lymphocyte homing efficiency in these mice was significant, significantly enhanced. So after that, there's a, only a couple of research uh, revealed some of the mechanism. One mechanism is uh, it seems the, the uh, high temperature will improve the L selecting dependent adherence. So that means the rolling will be uh, promoted. The, lymph, uh, the L selecting mediate the lymphocyte rolling will be promoted. And also, the high temperature will increase the chemokine expression. CCL25, uh, 21 expression. So this uh, chemokine was mainly expressed by the, uh, the blood endocytium cells, blood vessel endocytium cells. And also uh, there's an um, increased expression of the ICAM1 on the blood vessel wall. Uh, it's a ligand, major ligand for the after L beta 2 integrins. So, uh, of these findings are focused on the selected either selecting or the endocytium cells. 
and either the chemokine or the interferon ligand. But how about interferons? Uh, can the temperature regulate, directly regulate the function of interferons? Since these molecules are central uh, adhesion molecules control the lymphocyte homing process. Uh, several years ago, we start to uh, ask this question and try to figure out uh, if the uh, high temperature can regulate the function of the leukocyte interferon. To uh, study this, uh, uh, to address this question, we isolate the T cells from mice and culture the T cell at either 37 or 40 degree uh, for 12 hours, then perform a cell healing assay inflow uh, on the different interim ligand surface. Uh, this uh, uh, flow chamber uh, experiment uh, we used for this study. Uh, uh, in brief, we coat a petri dish with different interim ligands. Uh, in this case, and they coat it either uh, coat the surface with either MAPTEL1 is a ligand for interval alpha 47, or VCAM1 is a major ligand for interval alpha 4 beta 1, or ICAM1 is a beta 2 integral ligand. So when we flow the cell in the chamber, uh, the cell will form uh, adherent on the uh, coated integral ligand surface, then we can start. Uh, study the the, uh, the cell healing uh, inflow just like this video. The, each white dot is uh, T cells, and you can see the the cells roll on the surface. The, when they when it was activated, the cells stop rolling and they form a firmer vest. Uh, so here's the uh, the results. Uh, it's we get a very interesting results here. Uh, the 40 degree treatment uh, showed uh, enhancement of the alpha 4 integrin mediated cell healing to either VCAM1 and MATCAM1. But uh, the 40 degree treatment does not affect the B2 integrin mediated cell healing. So it's very clear here. I also want to uh, uh, show here is uh, uh, we use PTX to inhibit the chemokine-induced interferon activation here, uh, but the PTS, PTX treatment cannot actually abolish the increased adhesion by the high temperature. That means this regulation is not a classical uh, chemokine-induced interferon activation, it's something else. Uh, consistently, we also observe the uh, enhanced Transmigration, uh, alpha four interim mediated transmigration here. It also can, uh, so yes. So the forty degree treatment can show there is show can promote the uh, both alpha four beta one and alpha four beta seven mediated cell transmigration. Uh, the mechanism is when the cells are exposed to 40 degrees, it will induce the expression of uh, a family of uh, molecules uh, named heat shock protein. So all of the members of, of heat shock protein are uh, the expression level are enhanced after the treatment. And interestingly, when we perform a co ip assay, we found only that HSP90, uh, this molecule are specifically uh, co ip uh, with the alpha 4, but not with beta 2. And when we overexpress this HSP90 uh, in the T cells, it showed the exact, exactly same. Uh, phenotype. So it, it uh, enhanced the cell adhesion and transmigration. So it on the VCAM1 or MATCAM1 surface. That means it promotes the alpha 4 integral mediated cell adhesion and migration. So uh, uh, please, uh, uh, in here uh, it's 
it's uh, 37 degree experiment. So that means uh, you only need to uh, express the over express the HSP19, you can get this effects. Uh, you don't need, you don't even need a 40 degree treatment here. So this experiment uh, uh, suggests uh, the upregulated expression level of HSP19 is the key to promote the alpha-4 integrated mediated cell here in transmigration. And then we found the actually the HSP19 bind to the alpha-4 tail, but not the base, base subunit tail. And it binds to a short sequence here. And using the single point mutation, we found there the three rescues are critical for the interaction. And then we choose this rescue to generate the mutation to abolish the uh, interaction between the HSP19 and alpha 4 tail. So this point, point mutation was in the, the set of plasmic tail of alpha 4 subunits. Then we generate a knocking mice. So in this mice, the alpha 4 integrin carry this point mutation, which will inhibit the uh, association between the HSV19 and alpha 4 integrin. So in this co-IPSC, co it clearly shows uh, when the mice carry this mutant, uh, the HSP19 cannot bind to the alpha 4 integrin anymore. So for the, co the T cells isolated from the KI mice, uh, it's clearly show the 40 degree treatment don't have any effects. There's no enhancement of the uh, either the alpha 4 integrin mediate cell healing or migration. For uh, uh, short term in home, uh, uh, T cell homing assay, it should the exact same results here. For white type T cells, the 40 degree treatment can promote, significantly promote the homing of the T cells to lymph nodes. But for the uh, T cells from the KMIs, uh, there's no such increase the uh, homing. And that means when we uh, block the interaction between HSP19 and alpha 4 integrin, even uh, the 40 degree treatment can increase the expression of uh, HSP19. Uh, this molecule cannot bind to the alpha 4 integrin, then it cannot promote the lymphocyte trafficking uh, in vivo. Uh, we also used uh, intravital microscopy to study the the effects of the 40 degree treatment on the rolling and uh, from the here two steps of lymphocyte homing in vivo. So basically, we, uh, in this experiment, they label the T cells uh, with fluorescence and injected into uh, and treat the cells with either 37 or 40 degree and inject the cells into the mice. And we can monitor uh, the cells rolling and from here in the HDV in the lymph node. And here the results show the 40 degree treatment for the white type T cells. The 40 degree treatment can increase both the rolling and uh, uh, the former hidden steps of the lymphocyte during lymphocyte homing. And uh, for the KI T cells, this increased uh, rolling and the from here uh, almost uh, inhibited, abolished by the, the po single point mutation in the tail of alpha possibility. So the, both the in vitro and the in vivo experiment uh, are consistent, uh, which show the HSP19 and the alpha 4 in uh, interaction uh, promote the rolling and the former rest of the lymphocyte during lymphocyte homing. Then what happened to the integrin after HSP19 binding? Uh, the first experiment uh, we perform is we study the, the binding of the tailing and killing to integrins. Since this two, the, the binding of these two molecules are critical steps for integrin activation, 
So the 40 degree treatment can significantly enhance the binding of both tailing and the tailing three to the upper four tail. But uh, for the KI mice, uh, there's no such increased tailing and tailing three binding. Uh, in this case, the increased tailing and tailing binding will induce the activation of alpha 4 integrate. But here, there's no such uh, effects. And uh, to confirm the, this uh, effects, we also establish a fret assay. It's an intramolecule fret. Uh, uh, in the experiment, we label the integrate hat with one fluorescence molecule. And we label the cell membrane as another one. The integral has this band conformation. The integral head are uh, very close to the cell, cell membrane. So there's a flat, I mean, uh, energy transfer between these fluorescent proteins. When the integral got activated, the head will move away from the plasma membrane. The flat signal will decrease. So this results you can clearly see here, the 40 degree treatment will induce a decrease of the threat signal. That means the integrate got a, a extended conformation. So the, the head move away from the plasma membrane here, and it's uh, corresponding to uh, activation of the integrate. But for the 40 degree, they did not uh, observe such conformational change. And how about the enhanced cell migration? As I introduced in the introduction, the, after the ligand binding, the ligand binding will induce the clustering of the, the integrate on the plasma membrane. Then it will trigger the activation of the downstream signal and promote cell migration. And when we map the binding between the HSD19 and uh, alpha 4 integrate, we found both the N terminal domain and the C terminal domain. Both of them can bind to the alpha 4 tail. Then we have, a, have an hypothesis. Um, maybe there's a one, one HSP19 molecule can bind two alpha 4 subunit at the same time. So that will induce the dimerization of alpha 4 integrin on the plasma membrane, uh, then trigger the activation of downstream signal. To uh, test our hypothesis, we uh, establish a split GIP IC. Uh, think, uh, it's, uh, we uh, fused two parts of GIP uh, to the alpha 4 tails and co express these molecules in the T cells. When integrating, uh, when two uh, alpha four integrating form dimer, it form a complete GIP. You will see a green signal on the cell membrane. So at thirty seven degree, there's no GIP signal on the cell surface. That means there's no dimerization of alpha four integrating subunits on the cell surface. When we treat the cells with forty degree. Uh, there's a very beautiful GIP signal on the plasma mem membrane. And this GIP signal are co-localized beautifully with the alpha 4 integrin. That means the 40 degree can induce the dimerization of the alpha 4 integrin. And for integrin have this point mutation, which block the HSV19 and alpha 4 interaction the 40 degree cannot induce the GIP signal, then in the, the 40 degree cannot induce the dimerization of the alpha 4 if we block the HSV19 binding to alpha 4. So this experiment uh, um, proved that our hypothesis, uh, the, I mean the HSV19 can link two alpha 4 integrate together uh, then uh, trigger a downstream signal. And indeed, the uh, fact phosphorylation was enhanced by the treatment of 40 degree and uh, small GTPH throw away 
was also uh, uh, activated. And both of these uh, changes uh, contribute to the uh, enhanced cell migration. Then we try to uh, figure out the biological significance of this mechanism. We use a seminella infection model. Uh, when the cells was infected by this bacterial at day four, the body temperature of the mice can reach to over 39 degrees. And so this result is very uh, 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 interesting. So for the KI mice, we observed large amount of bacteria cannot be cleared uh, in the intestine. And um, the, there's a much less T cells in these mice. That means the, when they block the HSP19 and uh, alpha 4, uh, the binding between HSP19 and uh, alpha 4 integrin, uh, the T cells cannot migrate into the gut. Uh, efficiently. So the bacterial, uh, the clearance uh, the bacterial was uh, significantly inhibited. So the, for the survival, uh, there's a significant difference between the survival of the white hive and KI mice. So the, for the KI mice, it start to die at day three. And uh, at day 10, uh, all of the uh, KI mice died. Uh, for the white hive mice, there's uh, still half of the mice uh, still survive. So this mechanism uh, is critical for the clearance of the bacteria infection uh, based on our experiments results. I also want to mention here that HFT19 can only be induced at a body temperature over 38.5 degrees. So if you have a, a lower fever, uh, you will don't have this mechanism uh, uh, activated. You, uh, when only, uh, when, uh, only when people uh, have a uh, fever over 38.5 uh, degree, uh, the body will initiate this mechanism to clear the uh, bacterial or I think uh, the virus infection. Uh, and once the HFP19 expression uh, is upregulated, even the body temperature uh, uh, came back to the normal temperature. The HFP19 will remain uh, at least for uh, two days. And so it's uh, relatively uh, stable uh, for. Uh, at least uh, 48 degree, uh, the 48, 48 hours. So for briefly summary, uh, the fever can induce the uh, expression of HSP19 uh, in uh, most of the immune cells. And this HSP19 can induce the derivation of alpha 4 integrin and activate the downstream signal then promote the lymphocyte trafficking. Uh, so uh, not only the lymphocyte, uh, in this paper, we use uh, T cells, but all of the um, alpha 4 integrin expressing immune cells, including T cell, B cell, monocyte, microphage, uh, uh, they think all of them are regulated by this mechanism. So it's a common mechanism for the immune cell trafficking. And uh, so uh, this is the end of the first story. And uh, uh, the second part of my talk, we will uh, briefly introduce uh, T cell specificity, uh, specificity regulation by different chemokines. So the feature of uh, leukocyte integrin is uh, uh, one leukocyte integrin can recognize at least two different uh, ligands. For example, the alpha 4B7. It can bind metal one and metal one. So the metal one are expressed in the gut associated with lymphoid tissues that, such as peer patch and ML. And so it's uh, responsible for lymphocyte homing to gut and related to the uh, gut inflammation. And uh, the weakened one is expressed in totally different tissues. 
so such as sti stimulated blood vessels, peripheral, peripheral lymph node, and the central nervous system bone marrow. So the the alpha four B seven actually can mediate the lymphocyte trafficking to different tissues by recognize the different ligands. Uh, uh, years ago, we tried to start to uh, answer this question, how the integrin alpha 4B7 select between different binding ligands to maintain the tissue specificity of lymphocyte homing. Uh, before, uh, before this work, uh, most of the integrin people think once the integrin was activated for the alpha 4B7 was activated by the manganese, it cannot recognize distinguish the two ligands. So the adhesion to both MACAN1 and LECAN1 is enhanced. There's, uh, it's a, a similar enhanced uh, adhesion to the both ligand, either for T cell and B cells. Uh, when they treat the cells with CCL25, they found a very interesting result here. Uh, the cells show the enhanced adhesion to MACAN1 at the same time, it showed inhibited adhesion to the v one And more, interesting, more interestingly, uh, when the cells are treated with CXL10, another chemokine, it showed the totally opposite regulation. Uh, this time, it uh, inhibits the cell adhesion to MECTAM1 and promotes the cell adhesion to VCAM1. So we uh, termed this phenomenon is an uh, integrin ligand specificity switch. Uh, the mechanism is uh, when the cell, when the uh, two different chemokines bind to their chemokine receptors on the surface of lymphocytes, for CCL25, it activates the P38 and PKC. PKC and CXCL10, it activates the CSR and the site. In this case, it activates two phosphatase, and here it only activates one. That will in, induce the different dephosphatation of the integrin tail. As a result, in this case, only tailing binds to the tail of bit seven, and here both tailing and tailing three binds. Then it triggers a different activation state of the integrin. Here it specif uh, specifically bind to the MECA one, and uh, this conformation it bind to the VCA one. And after this study, we try to figure out what happened to the extracellular domain of the integrin. Since that study mainly focused on intracellular uh, uh, regulation mechanism. Uh, first. We use the atomic force microscopy. This work was uh, collaborated with uh, Frank John at Lehigh University. Uh, uh, briefly, we, uh, there's a, a left side, it's a lead T cells was labeled uh, as a cantilever, the tip of the cantilever of AFM. Uh, then the surface was coated with either MECA1 or VCAN1. We can measure a single bond between integral alpha 4B7 and uh, two different uh, uh, integral uh, ligands, alpha 4B7 ligands. So the results is here. The untreated cells uh, are in black, the black line here. The, when the cells were treated with CX, CCL25 for the MECA1 bond, uh, there's an increased Binding force on uh, to the MECAN one, but to the VCAN one, the binding force decreased. And uh, for the six cell ten treatment, it's opposite. For the MECAN one, uh, the binding force decreased, and for the VCAN one, it's increased. And among these, show the highest binding for both. So that means the this this experiment clearly shows. Actually, the regulation happened at a single molecule level. Each single molecule uh, has this opposite regulation on their binding affinity to different uh, integral ligands. They also establish uh, flame-based uh, fat acid. So we can monitor the conformational change of each 
uh, interval molecule in real time. Uh, this time, we, in, in addition to the tail, uh, the headpiece uh, threat, they also uh, add, add another included, uh, they also included another tail based uh, threat assay. When interval was activated, the tail separate. So the threat will decrease. Using these two uh, threat system, we can monitor the uh, conformational change of the inter molecule on the uh, sur cell surface of left cell. So this results is uh, consistent, actually the consistent with the AFM re uh, results. Uh, this is untreated cell. When interval was treated with uh, sec cell 10, it has a kind of uh, activation, so it's, it has an extended conformation, but not that extended. And the CCL25 treatment can induce further extension of this intermolecule, the intermolecule and manganese treatment can you induce the highest maximal uh, extension of the intermolecule. So that means the different chemo kind actually it, it induces the uh, unique uh, uh, distinct uh, conformation of the active conformation of integral alpha 4 b 7 So uh, uh, as a brief summary, uh, the resting integral has can, this kind of resting state. It has a relatively low binding affinity to both VK1 and MAC1. When integral was activated by sex cell 10, it has this kind of uh, intermediate, we, we call it intermediate uh, extended conformation. And now it has increased affinity to VK1, but it has a decreased affinity to VK1. That means this uh, binding is even lower than the resting states. And when integral was activated by CCL25, it has more extended conformation. Now it has the opposite. Uh, Finding affinity to MAC1 and VK1. Now it has an increased affinity to MAC1 and a suppressed affinity to VK1. The interval was activated by manganese and had the full extension. Uh, now uh, this uh, integral conformer, uh, active conformer, can bind to the, uh, v, uh, both VK1 and MAC1 in high affinity. So in this uh, study, actually, it's the first time to prove the integral can have these different uh, active conformations. Uh, the, actually, the intermediate open conformation, actually, it has a physiological function, uh, different physiological, physiological functions. So uh, I think. I will end here and up here. Uh, first, I will like to thank my collaborators, uh, Professor uh, Bo Hui Li from the Dalian Institute of Chemical uh, Physics, uh, Chinese, Chinese Academy of Sciences, and Frank Zhao from Lehigh University, and uh, uh, from Dian uh, Qingwu from Yale University for their uh, working with us. and. Uh, I also like to thank my students and the funding fundings to support our research. Thank you for your attention.